Hey y'all, what's good, beautiful people? It's your girl Tay, and I'm here yet again with another update video. So definitely make sure you guys smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe, plus push your post notification bell button so that when anytime I upload a video, you will be notified. So just, just, just a couple of updates. I have not got a chance to check our favorite subject, which is the emergency snap maximum benefits for the month of September, but I believe things are pretty much the same. I don't think that there are going to be any additional snaps, uh, any additional months that are going to be added to that list. Um, if I'm being honest, because I know there were quite a few, uh, states that had actually already rescinded the state of emergency order which is needed to get these benefits okay but there was some interesting information that i wanted to read to you guys regarding benefits but we're going to get to that a little bit later on in the video i did come across some um like i said some 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 updates that don't really have anything to do with snap but we're going to get to those anyway so wait no no they're on the internet um Hold on, y'all. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about this article was uh, made available as of the 8th of September, okay? It's basically talking about what's going on in California with Amazon warehouse workers, okay? So it says that just recently, California uh, passes a bill giving Amazon workers, uh, warehouse workers, power to fight speed quotas, okay? So California lawmakers have passed a first-of-its-kind legislation that would give Amazon and other warehouse workers new power to fight speed quotas, which critics say have forced workers to skip bathroom breaks and skirt safety measures. The bill, if signed by the governor, could also make public more comprehensive details about the demands of Amazon, uh, the demands that Amazon makes of its warehouse staff, specifically about the impact of speed quotas on the workers' health, okay? So, uh, one expert says, it's the first step in changing working conditions in the warehouse, said Vina Duval, an expert on labor law and technology at the University of California, Hastings College of Law. Uh, who supports the legislation. Warehouse employ a ballooning workforce, largely thanks to Amazon, now the second largest private private employer in the U.S. with more than 950,000 workers. Tracked by algorithms, Amazon workers staff rush to pack and ship a never-ending stream of shopping orders to be delivered in a matter of hours. California's Assembly Bill 701 asserts that productivity demands cannot come at the expense of the health and safety, for example, by pushing workers to skirt safety techniques or skip rest breaks, which they're entitled to. If that happens, the bill would give current and former workers more legal pathways to appeal them. OK, so. First of all, let's talk about that, because um, I worked at a. Um, uh, a call center just recently not too long ago I worked at a call center for just a short period of time now thankfully that call center because of the pandemic they had put it to where everybody had to work from home so I really only had to go in for the first day for orientation and things of that nature but after that we were working solely from home okay thankfully um, and that was around the holiday time of last year specifically for Thanksgiving and Christmas and um, and that so the point I'm trying to get to is one of the things that uh, came up in a conversation when I was there with orientation. I remember there was a moment when the um, person who was hosting the orientation kind of left the room. And so there were some people in there that said they had actually worked for this company before. And one of the things that they mentioned, because I had to ask, I said, well, how do you like it? You know, what's it like? What's morale like? Um, and one of the things that they said is the only thing is that they they're very, very strict on your bathroom breaks. You get points. You get points based off of how many phone calls you take a day. There is a certain quota now. They they don't give you that in writing when you apply or even when you get offered the position. There's no documentation because uh, trust me, I read all the fine print. There was no documentation that said that there was a specific quota of how many phone calls I needed to take a day. But shortly after working there, um, after some time, I started to realize they started to incentivize basically what they wanted. So they wanted you to get between or make between 95 to 100 calls a day within your eight hour shift. And like I said, um, if you were working at the actual office, one of those employees basically said that, you know, they time you once you get up, once you say you have to use the restroom and then you get up and you go to the restroom, there's a timer that's on your station and they don't want you to take more than five minutes, which to me was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, come on, realistically, yeah, if a person says they're going to the bathroom and then they're gone for 45 minutes or even 30 minutes or even 20 minutes, then, you know, I, I would think something is wrong. But depending on where the bathroom is, if it's upstairs, if it's downstairs if I have to travel a little bit you know what I mean to get to the bathroom then I feel like that should be taken into consideration so 
that to me was like the first red flag of this company thankfully like i said i was working at home so you know even i'm not gonna lie you guys sometimes i would be on a phone call i would mute it and i would use the restroom because the person would be so busy talking and explaining what it was that they need they had no idea by the time that they were done telling me what they needed i had been done washed my hands and i'm back at my desk handling what i needed to handle tmi but that's the reality of the situation because i just didn't want to take the chance that i don't want them to be timing me i don't want to have to put it on you know what i mean uh uh put it on break every time I have to use the bathroom and realistically there's a lot of people that have health conditions where they have to use the bathroom consistent you know a lot is what I want to say more than the average person so I was wondering how do they take all of those different things into um, consideration anyways it was a temporary position you know and for whatever the reason may be they ended up cutting the whole the whole department that I was working for like I literally got laid off so you know all things happen for a reason but getting back into this topic I have heard and seen um, a lot of different articles and uh, little news clips and stuff like that where people are basically complaining about the health conditions you know the safety conditions in these warehouses not just Amazon just warehouses in general um, there was actually a video again on social media I mean I'm, I'm telling you guys most days you can find a lot of stuff on social media you ain't got to be on there being addictive to it but sometimes sometimes it's a safe haven for you to get a little bit more insight on certain things but yeah there was a young lady who was actually recording herself in a um, in a facility in a warehouse i don't know if it was for amazon i think it was for amazon and i think she had literally put that she had been working for a certain amount of time and she had not been able to take her break things of that nature that to me you that that's basically slavery i mean i know you're still getting paid but if the safety conditions are not being met if the health uh is the health concerns are not being met and if a person is still being denied their uh basic needs like being able to go to the restroom or taking a 15 or a 10 minute break depending on the company to me what else would you call it i'm i'm glad somebody is actually stepping in but at the same time it's you know, it just gives me a little bit of pause knowing that a lot of this type of um, stupidity still goes on in the world. And I'm pretty sure those workers in the warehouse are not making enough money. There, there could never be unless you're paying me a million dollars per shift or a pretty decent uh, amount of money per shift for me to work under those conditions. And you're not going to pay me no minimum wage and think I'm going to say, look, 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 let me tell you guys something. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not perfect. But I will surely walk off if you deny me my basic needs, whatever that may be. Moving on, though, uh, moving on. The next thing that I wanted to talk about. So I did actually bring this to you guys' attention last week in the video, but I wasn't reading any information about it. I had, again, ran across a video on uh, social media. I did kind of read a little bit up on it by myself, but basically what I was telling you guys in that video was all based off of my memory from the research that I did do. So today I wanted to dive a little bit deeper. So the subject is about the IRS trying to construct a bill or some type of legislation where they be able to peer into our bank account. So there are several different articles that that came out on this topic this article here says that uh, Biden's IRS plan would allow surveillance of small bank accounts Venmo PayPal and crypto so now they're trying to say that if you have a bank account with as much as six hundred dollars in there or more they'll be able to look into it the average US citizen wants to know why President Joe Biden plans to allow the IRS to snoop into bank accounts I sure want to know uh, Venmo PayPal and crypto transactions among other things the Biden administration says this type of surveillance is needed to prevent tax evasion a key p pillar of Biden's proposed plan to pay for Democrats three point five trillion dollar budget plan is to monitor money going in and out of individuals bank accounts. This is coming from Daily Mail. Under Biden's proposal, banks will be required to report to the IRS every deposit and withdrawal from an account in order to target audits. The plan would mostly main would most mainly affect the self-employed who self-report their income and deductions. The wealthy could also be targeted. Banks are opposed to the proposal, saying it would require too much work for too little return. <laughs> Other critics of the proposal complain it would violate the Fourth Amendment, which protects U.S. citizens from search and seizure without probable cause. It could victimize poor taxpayers who can't afford to fight tax audits or move their money into offshore accounts, said Patrick Hedger, who's the vice president of the policy at Taxpayers Protection Alliance, a nonprofit advocacy and watchdog group based in Washington, D.C. that monitors federal spending and taxation. So 
You're going to end up punishing the worst off among us. The lower income folks in this country have historically been the targets of aggressive IRS audits because they don't have the CPAs and the lawyers to begin to be able to fight back. OK, this is also coming from Hedger. He also says, I don't see why they need to be going after people, you know, the average Joe. He added, you're going to push more folks into small cash transactions. You're going to push more banking offshore. The big fish out there that do have seized sizable assets that are eligible for taxation offshore. According to the White House, the plan would prevent tax evasion and the IRS would know how much money is in an individual's bank account in a given year and exactly how much is going in and out. Yeah, that's just way too much. I 100% I, I agree. I was definitely feeling the same way um, when it comes to the average Joe, the way that they put it basically your average American like me anybody in a situation like me if you're not wealthy if you don't have the money or the means to be able to afford like they said some type of lawyer to help you just in case you do end up in a tax, a tax audit situation this is definitely going to uh, affect them um hold on hold on hold on says this crackdown on unreported income is expected to generate 460 billion billion for the IRS so yeah, this this is what I'm talking about here. This is all about this is all about money at the end of the day. And there's another article that I kind of want to skimp over about this as well. But on its website, PayPal says it already reports sales of 20,000 or more to the IRS. It also reports if a user has 200 payments for goods or services in the same year. But this reporting varies from state to state. In Vermont, Massachusetts, Virginia, and Maryland, PayPal says it reports $600 in gross payments volume for from sales of goods or services in a single calendar year, regardless of the number of transactions. And in Illinois, if you receive $1,000 in gross payment volume um, of goods or services in a single calendar year with at least four payment transactions processed on PayPal, it also gets reported, okay? That's all for this particular article. Um, like I said, I did want to go back to one of the other articles. But yeah, that's just a little bit too much for me at the end of the day. Um, I, I, whether it's a subject of privacy or not, because in the other article, and I can't even remember which one it was that I was looking at, but there was another article where it was basically saying that this situation doesn't fall under privacy or any laws or any amendments that may be available okay so it says the IRS wants to increase funding by 80 billion to go after tax cheats but some say it could open your account and track transactions to the IRS if you have as little as six hundred dollars in any account okay I know a lot of people are going to work their way around that just keep five hundred dollars in your account <laughs> I mean realistically a lot of people are going to, like they said, they said it in the other article, a lot of people are going to find ways to fight this. They're going to put their money in. Those who can afford it are going to put their money in offshore accounts. Those who can't afford it are going to be forced to do more cash transactions. They're going to go back into, uh, I don't want to say savage, but they're going to go back into what people were doing before banks were even created. What they're going to do is start buying saves and safes, saves. They're going to start buying safes, S-A-F-E-S, -E safes, and putting their money in. They're going to they're gonna keep their money the same way they used to do when people were hiding their money in uh mattresses and stuff like that to, to keep it hidden the, the, you know what i'm saying they the, people people are going to find a way so at the end of the day you know what i mean my only thing is is for especially for self self-employed people here's the thing with self-employed people because you're not getting that income um and let me just say this again as a disclaimer you guys i'm not a financial advisor i don't work for any banks this is just my personal opinion that i'm sharing with you guys which i absolutely love to do and i'm going to continue to do but for people who don't have get money in the conventional way whatever that may be getting a regular paycheck every week every two weeks or whatever the case may be um they're forced to get bank accounts because that's the only way that they can develop a paper trail so that they can file their taxes um and then at the same time just when it comes to their basic needs like if they want to go and buy a household they have to be able to show that they have some income coming in and unfortunately having your money in a safe doesn't necessarily prove to the bank that you have money coming in on a consistent basis the only way to prove as far as i know now if you guys know something differently totally let me know share that information because it seems like everybody is going to need it anyway but as far as i know the only way for them to be able to uh, see that you have money coming in and out of your household on a regular basis consistent so that you they can be assured that you're going to pay your bill your mortgage your car note or whatever it is that you're trying to get a loan for um is to have a bank account and they usually go back and check your previous tax statements for that bank account um or they'll go back at least three months at least the last 90 days of uh, bank statements just to make sure that you have a certain amount of money coming coming into your account. How are people going to be able to do that now safely 
and securely knowing that now uh, uh, or, or how are people going to be able, people who are self-employed, people who are not getting paychecks going to be able to pay for things like that. It's like I, I almost feel like the, 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 the government without even realizing it's like you're forcing people again, you're taking away choices. You're forcing people into situations they don't want to be in. People are going to have to start um, engaging in uh, they're saying small cash transactions, but I feel like people are going to find a way and they're going to end up doing large cash transactions at the end of the day, whatever that may be however they work that out they're going to have to start buying cars in cash they're going to have to start putting down a, a, a very substantial amount of money to purchase a household um it's, it's just going to be a lot but they're going to figure out ways to get be beyond this red tape um there's there's no doubt about it in my mind but here's what i was telling you about um, it says legal analysts, legal analysts say we have seen plans like the current proposal before. There are the problems that lie before the gate to our brave new digital world. OK, for 45 years, Americans have not had much right of privacy in their banking records because in 1976, the United States Supreme Court held that you can't have a right of constitutional privacy in transactions and records that you willingly place in the hands of a third party like a bank. So there you go. Because you're dealing with a third party service, which is the bank, that takes away your constitutional right to privacy. OK, so um, uh, Manette says that the case may not hold in the future. In 2018, there was a U.S. Supreme Court case that held that had a different take, but it might be under the analysis of the United States Supreme Court in 2018, because in that year in the Carpenter uh, case, a sales site location information case, the United States Supreme Court held that in the pervasion digitized world of the cloud, you are no longer you no longer lose your right to constitutional privacy by placing your records in the hands of a third parties. Now it remains to be seen whether that ruling in the Carpenter case will apply to banking records, but it certainly might. OK, so there's going to be some debate, obviously, because of, of what was said in 1976 and then what came out in a different case in 2018. But either way, I wanted to let you guys know what was going on with that, because this no doubt in my mind is going to affect a significantly large amount of people across the U.S. hands down. It doesn't matter what your situation is. It doesn't matter if you have a bank account because you're just a regular everyday person. It doesn't matter if you're self-employed. It doesn't matter if you actually work for an employer. It doesn't matter. This is going to affect us all. Okay. So I definitely wanted to give you guys that information. Now, really quickly, I think we're going to jump more into pandemic EBT tomorrow because we're already at 17 minutes and I don't want to make this video too, too long, but I am going to check to see if any additional states have been, um, approved. Just because I want you guys to have that info every day until they stop giving it to us. So I'm going to look. I'm not going to give you the payout dates, but here are the states. So as of right now, we have Alabama, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, D.C., Georgia, Guam, Hawaii, Kansas, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Mississippi, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Virgin Islands, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. So as always, you guys, on that note, I hope this information has been some way helpful or useful to you guys. You know, I absolutely love providing this information to you guys, and I'm going to continue to do so for as long as I possibly can. Don't forget to check out my merch shop down below. Remember to live, love, and elevate, and I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Peace, beautiful people.